How would a poor pauper peasant ever know what it's like to live with the luxuries of a king? The best he can hope for is to hear about it from court jesters, bards, and troubadours, and maybe one in a million has the resolve to raise himself from peasant to knight, and one in a billion from knight to king. So why would the mindless, insolent masses ever expect to comprehend what it's like to have the immortal inner glory of God, a most definitely proven by virtue, glory, declared again and again and again by the immaculate songs of utterly unsung saints. Because they believe on his name, like dark age dogma parrots in the human hypocrite salad zoo of the 21st century. Because they worship and vote for pedophiles, preachers, and priests. Because they go to church for robotic, ever more degraded generations of shallow, hereditary self-righteousness? The best worldly citizens of this wicked world can hope for while this world gets what is horrifically, karmically here and continuously coming is to be comforted by the mercy of saints and ennobled by the wisdom of sages, and if their applied virtue allows for even one of their neurons to be actually ennobled, then, as an illumined result, maybe one in a trillion has the resolve to raise himself from insufferably ignorant to all-knowing, all-seeing, and all-loving. What do godless, arrogant fools know about the meaning of life, much less the purpose of God's creation? Those who can't see past their upturned, academic, or know-it-all, religiously redolent, faithless gnosis could never fathom even a single atom of beauty, much less have humility bred all at the unspeakably complex majesty of the cosmos, and have the solace of knowing that reaching Immortal infinity is a matter of real saintly effort, not of church membership. Turning away from the obvious prejudice and soul-revolting piety of dogmatic religion doesn't take a genius. But lumping God with and throwing him out with the filthy orthodox bathwater is done only by the hubris worshippers. Those who denounce God the most are the ones who think they can get away with their many misbehaviors, or the ones who think they can control the crooked course of their shallow lives, till their self-created karma hits them like a ton of leaded bricks in the parasitic, in the parasite-ridden, shouldn't have had that last glass of Portuguese wine gut. Atheism is the anthem of wretched wantonness that all too... Those who denounce God the most are the ones who think they can get away with their many misbehaviors, or the ones who think they can control the crooked course of their shallow lives till their self-created karma hits them like a ton of leaded bricks in the parasite-ridden, shouldn't have had that last glass of Portuguese wine gut. Atheism is the anthem of wretched wantonness that all too soon turns into the satanic manifesto of communist depravity. Atheism is also the bread and dogma of bitterness, and bitterness is the outer state of inner cowards. Not believing in God, which is not having faith in one's potential divinity, is the rotten core of self-centeredness, and those who are proudly self-centered have trained themselves to worship their little egotistical false sense of Oh, so amazingly human omnipotence, revolving around the axles of their massive mainstream lubricated vanities, till their omnipotence fall flat till their omnipotence falls flat in the face of their mediocre morality. Till their omnipotence falls flat in the face of their mediocre mortality or the mortality of those they love, their loneliness, their aging, their ailing bodies, and any of those endless nightmares of this world. And then, and then their spiritually non-resilient lives, the result of their faithless or faithfully dogmatic upbringings, fall apart. And then, 
and then some blessed day brought about by the unbearable agony of their souls and the sincere humility of their humbled egos, they will cry like babies begging for the mercy of their Divine Mother, and they will pray for understanding from their beloved Father. God said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. He did not say, O oh, wonderful, God-loving nations of this corrupt world, where the worshippers of Satan run rampant, raping, sodomizing, sacrificing, and murdering my babies, while the faithful are too busy, eating trash, drinking poison, breathing death, playing video games, watching Netflix and porn, to notice. But of course, you're all automatically worthy of heaven. Why would you have to work hard for divinity, much less... Why would you have to work hard for divinity, much less learn to crucify your sex addictions? But of course, you're all automatically worthy of heaven. Why would you have to work hard for divinity, much less learn to crucify your sex addictions?